Good morning, everyone. Here we are again, down here at Franklin Square Community Church on Old State Route 558 down here in Latonia, Ohio, where our uh, online service is at 9.15 and our in-house service is at 10 o'clock every Sunday. So if you haven't made it down here, come on down. We are so glad you're joined in this morning. So here we are. First day, first Sunday of Advent. Hallelujah. <clears throat> A message today, I'm calling it Hope. That is the first Sunday of Advent. Hope. So with that, let's go to our Father in prayer. Father, you gave us the gift of hope, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Nothing is too difficult, too messy, or dirty for you. Jesus came to give us the gift of eternal life through the salvation and the and that only you, our Father, can give. When we believe in the, your Son, we think of you, the hope that you ensured in all of us. And we pray all this in your holy name. Amen. All right, folks. Today... The Christmas season is upon us again. In this first Sunday of Advent, this morning we're going to discover the hope that comes through the birth of Jesus Christ. Isaiah, Isaiah offered in chapter 9 was something that the Jewish folks needed more than anything else. And that was hope, hope, hope that one day someone would come to make all things right and restore what was broken with them. Many, many years ago, the birth of Jesus was a fulfillment of the hope and thus, and this fact offers us hope today, right now. The Jewish folks needed these words to remind them that God had not forgotten them. He was there. In the scripture today, Luke 1, 30 through 38, we learn that Mary was told by an angel that she would give birth for a son, bring forth a son, and his name would be Jesus. But Mary looked at him and said, that can't be. I've never been with a man. Now at that same time, this young fellow, Jewish man, his name was Joseph. He was presented with a very difficult decision. You see, he was the guy that was engaged to be married to this woman named Mary. And she was already pregnant. Now Joseph, he, he didn't know what to think. So what did he do? He planned to call off the wedding because it, apparently to him, his bride-to-be was already unfaithful to him. That night when he went to bed, an angel came to him And the, and the Lord spoke through him to Joseph in the dream, in his dream, and told him that go forward with the marriage because the child in her womb was from the Holy Spirit. Now all these events took place to fulfill the prophecy, claiming there would be a child born as a light in the darkness, and a hope for all the folks. The child that was to be born would be named Emmanuel, which means God with us. The center of the Christmas story is focused squarely on the birth of Jesus. He is the fulfillment of the Israelites' hope 
that God would push back the darkness and shine that bright light into the world. Folks, one of the reasons Christmas resonates in our hearts is because we too live in the world that's similar to Israel. Our world is dark, corrupted because of sin that is so easily entangles all of us. There is war, disease, conflict, oppression all around us as we speak and growing. We too are in need of the Christ child to usher in the light, to push back the darkness around us in this old world right now, right today. Christmas is a reminder that whatever it is we hope for in our lives, healing, restoration, forgiveness, or a fresh start, it is, a, it is available to us through Emmanuel, who is God with us. Hope is not the results of the absence of conflict, difficulties, struggling, or trial. Hope is the result of the presence of God. God's presence has come to give us hope. When Jesus was born, to give us hope. The hard part about hope is that it often takes longer than we can, than we would like it to be fulfilled. Like the Jewish folks experience, hope requires patience, which most folks in our lives today and days have very little of. Israel saw that one day in the future, God would bring a great light and salvation would would and salvation through the birth of a child. They knew that. They saw it. It was it was not until a hundred years later that Matthew recorded Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Jesus is the very presence of God on earth. He offers forgiveness of sin, destruction of evil. And most of all, the promise of eternal life. So why do we read Isaiah's prophecy every year during Christmas? It's because seeing the faithfulness of God in the past gives us deep and abiding hope in, a pre in the presence of a unweary, unwaverly, excuse me, trust. For the future. The Apostle Paul made an appeal of hope to those who trusted in Christ as he wrote the letter to the early church of Roman. Paul said everything that had been written in the past, all the prophecies, all the fulfillment is meant to teach us how to hold on to faith in God. To answer our prayers as we see. What has been written gives us endurance. Encouragement that we might have hope. It is important that we revisit the prophetic words of the Old Testament. And the fulfillment that comes through the birth of Jesus Christ. It, remains, it reminds us that God can be trusted to come through and meet us in all of our greatest times of need. Th through there are many, though there are many distractions during the Christmas season, and we know that for a fact. This measure, this measure is a reminder that hope is often to us, offered to us through Jesus. Arrival in the manger. When he arrived in the manger, our hope was offered. 
Our God is always here on time. He knows exactly what we need. He can be trusted to reveal the light to Christ in order to push back the darkness in our lives. In a land full of deep darkness, a light is indeed dawned. Because God does keep all his promises, we do have hope, folks. We can trust in Jesus' promises to come again in glory. He promised he would. And knowing that we and knowing that where he is, we will one day be also. That should give you all the hope you need right there. Jeremiah 29 11 tells us this For I know the thoughts that I think toward you saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Folks, remember, back there in Luke, chapter 1, 37, made one statement. For with God, nothing is impossible. Let us close with a prayer. Father, we come to you today in need of hope. Hope that you are faithful and have provided all we need by sending your son to us. We ask that the light of his life would shine on, into our lives and lift our heads. We offer to you the areas of our lives where we need your presence. We trust you today with our lives and we look forward to seeing how you will come through. We thank you for the hope that can only come from you. Thank you for showing us the heart of Christmas. We pray all this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Folks, Three weeks from today, you need to think about this through your through this season. Three weeks from today, our Lord and Savior birthday. Two thousand years ago, he was born. Three years, from, three weeks from the day. Born in a stable with nothing. Animals around looking at him. So folks, as you go through this week, and I know you'll be shopping for all these bargains and presents and think about maybe going home and instead of putting gifts under the tree, we set our children down and explain to them what it's all about, hope. With all that, I wanna thank you for joining in and I'll see you again next week right here at Franklin Square Community Church. Thank you.